This is a video to support an introductory proofwriting class that I'm teaching in the upcoming spring semester. So here we're doing a little bit more regarding logic, building up all of the notions that we need in order to write careful mathematical proofs. So let's recall in the last video, we defined something called a mathematical statement or sometimes just a statement. So I've put in mathematical in parentheses there. So a mathematical statement is a complete sentence written with words or other mathematical notation that is either true or false. So in other words, there's no room for interpretation. And here are some examples. So we've got three as a natural number. And so here we have it written in mathematical notation, but that's a complete sentence in mathematical notation. The square root of two is a rational number. Well, so that's a complete sentence in mathematical notation as well, but that's false. And so we have this is going to be a true mathematical statement, whereas this is a false mathematical statement. Then in the last video, we also described that sometimes we give mathematical statements names. So here I've named the statement the function f of x equals x squared is even. I've named that p. Well, so let's notice that that is a true mathematical statement. It's well known and easy to show that any even polynomial is in fact an even function. The next, the statement Q is defined to be the number two is odd. So that's false. And then finally, the statement R is defined as we have one half is less than one. And so that's true. Great. And so the we have there, those are just filler words in order to make this like a more complete sentence. Okay. Great. And so what we really want to do in this video is look at some operations on statements. In other words, we're developing a certain arithmetic of logic. And so the first thing that we want to do is define a binary operation on statements given by something called the AND operator. And that will be denoted by this like upside down wedge thing or something. Okay. So this is a way of putting two sentences together with an AND statement. So for example, we could write three is a natural number and the square root of two is a rational number like that. Now we could write this out in words just as I spoke it. So it would go something like this. Um, the number three is a natural number and the square root of two is rational. Now, I haven't spoken about the truth of this, but this would be a way to write it with like symbolic logic, and this would be what it turns out to be in a complete sentence. So generally, when you're doing a proof, which is what we'll get to eventually, um, you'll sometimes write out some of your intermediate steps in your drafts using this symbolic logic, but in the end, you really want to write everything out in complete sentences. That's kind of good style. So notice that this statement is false and it's false because the square root of two is not rational. And as we'll see, for an AND statement to be true, both inputted components have to be true statements. So let's look at some of these others. So let's maybe do P and Q. So that would be this statement here and this statement here. And that says the function f of x equals x squared is even, and the number two is odd. Well, that's also a false statement because the number two is definitely not odd, it is even. So just to reiterate, this up here is a false statement and this right here is a false statement as well. Now let's compare that with p and r. So that would be this statement right here regarding the function f of x equals x squared, and then this inequality. So if we wrote that as a complete sentence, it would look like this. So the function f of x equals x squared is even, and one half is less than one. So both of those are true, and so when we put them together with an and, we also get something that's true. So that's a true statement. And so now, now at times we want something that looks like a multiplication table for these operations that we do with mathematical statements. And that's sometimes called a truth table. So let's look at the truth table for this and operation. 
and then we'll move on to our next operation. So the truth table for the AND operation goes like this. So we'll put our inputs as P, Q. So these are not these statements over here, but these are just kind of arbitrary statements that are either true or false. And then here we'll have the output to the right of this orange line, and that's gonna be P and Q, like that. So if we input two true statements, we're going to get a true statement. If we input a true statement and a false statement, we'll get a false statement. If we input a false statement and a true statement, we'll get a false statement. And that's because this is really a, some sort of commutative operation. Notice if we read the sentence in reverse, that would go something like, we have one half is less than one and the function f of x equals x squared. Well, that's still true. So this and conjunction is commutative. And then finally, we have false combined with a false will most definitely give us a false. So we didn't have an explicit example of this kind of setup on the board, but I'll let you think about how to combine two of these false statements, both symbolically and with words in order to get something that is obviously false. Okay, so now let's maybe get rid of this and we'll look at the OR conjunction. So we just looked at combining mathematical statements with AND. Now we're ready to look at the same thing, but with the OR statement. And I should say that this is not the exclusive OR. Like you could have both input statements be true and still have something that's true. But maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, so let's maybe look at these over here. So in symbols, three is in the natural numbers or the square root of two is in the rationals would be written like this. Now let's write that out in words and that would go like this. So the number three is a natural number or square root of two is rational. So now if we read that sentence, we'll see that that sentence is true because one of those is true. We know that three is a natural number. So even though root two is not rational, we're okay because we've got an or statement here. So like I said, this is a true statement. Okay, so now let's maybe combine the square root of two is rational with the number two is odd and see what we get there. And so that would look something like this, square root of two is rational or, and then we've called this thing Q. So again, this is kind of written in a mixed form with mathematical notation here and then with the name of the statement for the Q statement. Okay, so let's write that out in words. That would go like this. The number square root of two is rational or two is odd. But if we look at that, we see that both of those statements are most definitely false. And in fact, the or statement that combines them is also false. So we've got a false there. Okay, good. And then maybe we could combine two things that are most definitely true and we'll see that we get a true statement. So let's maybe do it like this. So three is a natural number or R. So we're combining this, which is written in mathematical notation, and then this guy down here. So let's see what that looks like as a sentence. So we've got the number three is a natural number or one half is less than one. Well, so no, now obviously both of those are true, but that makes the conjunction of them with the or statement also true. So just like we did with and, we'd probably like some sort of multiplication, multiplication table for the or statement. And we could do that and it would look something like this. So this would be the truth table for or. So again, we'll have our inputs P and Q. And then to the right of the orange line, we'll have P or Q. And again, these are not the same P's and Q's that we had over on this side of the board. This is something that is just like playing the role of any true or false statement. Now let's look at all the possibilities. We could have both of them are true, but then that's gonna give us something true in the end. We could have the first one is true, the second one is false, that gives us something true in the end, as we saw with um, this example right here, 
we could have something where the first one is false and the second one is true. That gives us something that is true. That's again because the or statement is commutative, so we could just write that in the other order and we'd still be okay. Or finally, we could have something where both input statements are false and we would get something that is false in the end. And that's like this example right here. So there's our truth statement for the there's our truth table for the or statements. And now we'll clean this up and look at one more operation. Now we want to look at the not statement. And while and and or are binary operations, so they take in two inputs, not is a unary operation, so it takes in only one input. And essentially what you want to do is take the information from a mathematical statement and invert its meaning or invert its truth. Okay, so let's look at this example maybe first. So here we wanna do not, three is in the natural numbers. So that's generally how you write it. So the operator's coming from the left. Now we could write that a couple of different ways. We could write it out in mathematical symbols like three is not a natural number. Or we could write it out with words in a similar way and that would go like this. The number three is not a natural number, which we know that three is a natural number, so this is most definitely a false statement. So we're seeing now that if you negate a true statement, you get a false statement. Okay, so let's maybe look at this second one. So we would have not the square root of two is in the rationals, but that could be written as the square root of two is not in the rationals like this. And then maybe we could write that out in words in the following way. So we have the square root of two is irrational. Great, and that is a true statement. So it's well known that the square root of two is irrational. So we negated a false statement and got a true statement. Okay, let's look at maybe one more example. Let's take this uh, statement P and negate it. So we would write that as not P in symbols. But if we wanted to write that as a sentence, we would need to change the data of the sentence so that it is like the opposite. So we don't want to change the function. We want to change what we're saying about the function. So we could maybe do that just directly in the following way. So the function f of x equals x squared is not even. Great. So, um, and that's maybe enough examples to jump to a truth table with the not statement. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we only need one input, which we'll call p. And then we'll have an output, which we'll have is just not P like that. So we only need to look at two cases here. So if something's true, then it's opposite or it's not is false. And then if something starts as false, then it's opposite is true. Okay, so that's a good place to stop.